Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I picked this up from Facebook Marketplace for $20. I thought, yes, $20, what a bargain. And went and had a look at it. And yeah, I didn't actually look at it very good. Um, there was a couple of big holes in the top that I did see. And the drawers were quite stiff, but I thought, no, that's nothing. I can fix that. So I brought it home. My nephew is after a set of drawers, so this is going to be for him. If he likes it in the end, he can have this one. So all in all, it's a good piece because it is solid wood. So put those drawers out, they were quite hard to get out. I found out later it was because they were in the wrong order. They did have numbers on the back of them, and once I put them in the right order, they were quite good. All the insides of the drawers are pretty stained, and some of them are falling to bits at the bottom there. They just need to be tightened. So I went ahead and took all the hardware off. Now the hardware was quite tarnished and not in very good order. So I decided not to keep those. Okay, got all the hardware off. Let's get stripping. So I gave everything a coat of this quick strip and it does work quite fast next time I use this I'll remove it a lot earlier it actually started to dry on there so I did take this back panel off because it had a hole in down the bottom you can't actually see it on here um, so yeah I took that off and I thought I'd replace that with a new piece This dresser, I think it had about three layers of paint on there. Just went ahead and removed those little nails on the back. And after I'd scraped all the um, Stripper off. I just gave it a good clean with some turps and a rag, got rid of any excess. I flipped it upside down and I noticed that the base was actually rotten. So yeah, that's a discovery. Um, so I had to remove the whole base. Which means I'm losing some height. So I'm going to have to put legs on this or a new base. I had to use quite a bit of force to get these off and I did damage the dresser a little bit as you'll see up next right there but that's easily fixed just put some wood glue in there and pushed it back together and then I just tipped it upside down and put something heavy on it until the glue set
So the bottom of the drawers were um, quite warped. So I just added a little bit of glue in there and some more nails on most of the drawers. This one here, it had a big bow in it and the bottom of it was scraping along the, um, the drawers when you're pulling it in and out. So what I decided to do is just remove it and then flip it up the other way um, so that wouldn't happen. The birds are so noisy today outside, they're unbelievable. When I'm working out there I don't really notice but then when I talk over um, my video later I can hear them they're so loud it's unbelievable so I'm trying to be really careful with this because I, I don't want to break it like the backboard and yeah I have to buy another piece Me quite a while to get this off. But I got there in the end. Just pop a bit of glue where I'm going to be sliding that board back in just to help it out a little bit. Slide that back in and then just put a few nails in there to hold it in place. Give all the drawers a good clean now, get rid of any dust and dirt in there. Now these rods along the inside that the drawers slide on, they were all quite wobbly. So I put nails on every single one of them and tightened them all up. So I needed to find a piece of wood for the, the base, the bottom. I found this piece of um, plywood. I don't know what it was. It looks like it was a lid for something. I found that out in the shed, so I thought I'd use that. So just measure what size I need. And I just measured that out on here and then I asked my husband if he would cut it for me with the skill saw because I hate the skill saw and he did that for me There's a few nails to it, screws and nails, and a hinge on the end, so um, I removed those before my husband cut it with the skill saw. And 
then I just give it a quick sand, take away any rough pieces, edges on it. So I could just paint it later, the same colour as the, um, the rest of the, the drawers are going to be. Sanded all the insides of the drawers just to help tidy them up a little bit. I also sanded on the edges where the drawers slide in and out just to help help that slide a bit better and I had to get in here on this um, the top piece here just get rid of all that paint because you're going to be you're going to be seeing that when you open the drawer there was this top drawer had a big gouge on it so I filled that up at this stage I'm still thinking I'm just going to be painting the whole dresser and so yeah so I used multi fill on all the drawers so when I put the base on flipped it upside down to put the base on, um, the corners were sticking out so I just grabbed my sander and I rounded off those edges. That fits perfectly now. So just grab some wood glue and pop that around the edge. Then I went and got some clamps and I just clamped that um, so it wouldn't move when I nailed the nails in. It stopped it from moving around. And just nailed all the way around. Just filled these holes up with some multi fill, and I got a bit of frog tape and just put that on the underside so the multi fill didn't fall straight through. This is just a all-purpose multi-fill for wood. It's quite good, it dries quite fast and it doesn't shrink. So this is the top drawer and what I've decided, I'm not going to paint the top drawer. I decided I would do something different. And I decided I'm going to do a herringbone design with these um, tongue depressors or popsicle sticks. I've seen this done before on a few channels and I thought I'd give that a go. It, it looks really neat when it's finished. I thought I'll give it a go and see if I can do it. I don't know if I'll do it again, but um, yeah, you'll see in a minute what I mean. So just line those up, um, that centre line, you're trying to keep the two popsicles, um, the centre, if you know what I mean. So the angle of the herringbone is right down the centre. 
probably didn't explain that very well but so I just popped on quite a bit of um, wood glue uh, if I ever do this again I think I'd use a bit of glue maybe something um, stronger than your normal wood glue you're probably wondering mm, why is that well you'll see in a minute <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember how they went. I'll figure that out again. So yeah, that's it. And then just keep cutting the ends off the popsicle sticks and work your way down, keeping an eye on that center line. So your hearing bone is nice and straight. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. So here it is now with them all on there. Now as they started to dry, some of them started to warp because they are quite thin. And I went to put the paper on there and then to put a weight on and I could feel there was one sticking right up. And so I tried pushing it back down and it ended up coming right off. So I had to muck around quite a while to get that back in the gap. And then some more started popping off as I was doing it. Oh, I couldn't believe it. A little bit of mucking around there that's okay the glue isn't dry yet so I'm fine but my husband could see I was having a little bit of trouble so he come oh, over and lend a hand he put some heavy pieces of wood on top and then I grabbed a gas cylinder a full gas cylinder and two cans of paint and pop that on and I left it overnight so it'd be nice and dry the next day so this is the next day and I grab my multi-tool thinking this is going to be great it's just going to cut through here and look oh dear <laughs> this happened a few times So I'm thinking to myself, oh, should I just pull them off and just do what I'm going to do to the other drawers? <laughs> so here's my pieces that fell off. Not too bad, only two pieces. Oh, and a tiny bit on the end there that you can't see. So I just glued them back on. And then, of course, I had to leave it for another 24 hours to make sure they were really dry. The next day I come along and I just sanded the edges nice and smooth so there were no little bits sticking out that would snag and I'm being very careful because I'm worried that they're going to pop off again. <laughs> just sand the top, get rid of that um, multi full level that out and then have a closer look and I could see there's still quite a few little marks, dents so grab some more multi fill and fold those in because the top everyone sees the top so you need that nice and smooth i 
just sanded the edges of the drawers more, more so they're nice and smooth and make sure there's absolutely no paint left in there and tried to tidy up the undersides of them as well so the next day when this was dry I came in with some um, tinted wood filler in the colour pine and just filled up all the little tiny gaps and ridges now it's time to put on the backboard, the new backboard. So just pop some wood glue around the edges there. If you're enjoying my video, Please like, subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can see my next video that's coming up. We'll just nail that on all the way around. So when that was completely dry, fingers crossed and I just sanded all that excess filler off down so it was nice and smooth and then went in with a little bit more some places I had missed. So these drawers I were just going to paint, that's why I used the multi fill and I sanded them. But then I decided no, I'm going to use this um, textured uh, wallpaper. So I went and cut out the pieces for those. I just traced around the edge and then cut a piece. And then I had a little bit of low hang, so I just pulled it back there and pressed down firmly any excess and then just cut that off. And I just used the wood glue to glue the wallpaper on. I prefer to use this than a wallpaper glue. I think it's a bit stronger. Pop that on and just press down firmly. Make sure there's no bubbles underneath. When it's dry, just come back with a piece of sandpaper on a block and just do your edges and it will just trim them up nicely for you. So I decided to cover all my drawers with this plastic sheeting because I was going to use my new spray gun. But then my husband turned around and said, oh, it's such a small piece. You'd spend most of your time cleaning your gun, wouldn't you? And then I just thought, oh, he might be right. So, <laughs> yeah. Never mind. So I just popped a hole in where the drawers were going and decided to give my top drawer a coat of this wipe on poly that's feast watson wipe on poly and while i was waiting for that to dry i decided to trim these uh, because they were a bit long they were too long so you just grab your pliers that have got a cutting edge on them Press quite firmly and they just cut through. Just make sure you're wearing glasses because they go flying everywhere and they can hit you in the face. So just give that a quick clean, get rid of all the dust before I start painting. Just gave it a coat of the Vizine Quick Dry Waterborne Primer.
And in between coats, I just gave it a little sand with light sandpaper just to get rid of any drips or marks that you don't want on there. It's paste, have it nice and smooth. And I just covered it, um, I painted my roller with Glad Wrap in between coats just to keep it moist, stop it drying out. And I gave this two coats of the undercoat. So a bit of tin foil on your tray and there's no cleanup. You just roll that up and throw it away. This is the colour I'm using, Bayberry, a fusion mineral paint. I just gave the whole dresser coat of that. Sometimes you can get away with one coat, um, but with this being a dark colour over the white primer, I gave it two coats and just sanded it in between coats. On the second coat, I decided to use my paintbrush instead of the roller. I do prefer a paintbrush. There's something about paintbrushes, I just prefer them. It's maybe therapeutic, I don't know, I just like them. So for my top coat, I'm using Chalked Matte Clear, but I'm mixing a little bit of my paint in it, because um, it's a semi-dark colour, I'm doing this to prevent it going a bit cloudy. Sometimes when you do a dark colour, especially black, it pays to put a bit of paint with your top coat and so this will dry nicely and there won't be any cloudiness to it so just yeah add a bit of paint give that a good stir and put your top coat on now it looks quite white here but I assure you when it dries it'll dry exactly like the paint So I gave the drawers, the whole lot, two coats. Now I had to resand the top a little bit because I could see um, when the light was shining on it, there were some ridges and some marks. So I needed to sand those, um, that multi-fill just a little bit more, just so I could have it nice and smooth. And then went and gave it another couple of coats. I love pulling frog tape off. I don't know why, I just find it very satisfying. In between coats of um, the poly, the wipe on poly, I just gave the wood a very light sand. And I ended up giving the draws three coats of the wipe on poly. Sorry, just the top draw I meant. The others had the matte clear. Decided to line all the drawers because they weren't very nice looking in the inside. So I got this um, vinyl uh, wallpaper, stick on self-adhesive wallpaper and use that on all the drawers. Just pop that in there and flatten it out with your hands or a tool if you need to. Make sure you get it into all the corners and it's nice and straight, no bubbles. 
underneath. This one's quite sticky and it's really good. You can lift it up and down a bit and muck around with it. I just sort of craft knife and cut off the excess around the edge. Just look for those holes again and poke the pin in there. Because the paint had filled the holes up a little bit. And time to pop, pop on the hardware. So my new hardware I just got from Funnings, I brought a pack of, I think it was a pack of six and then four single ones, so I had ten for the dresser, I think they're around about f just under five dollars each. And then I gave the drawers two coats of, sorry, three coats of the top coat because I had mixed up too much. I decided I might as well use it and it ended up getting three coats. And then I just freshen the inside of the drawers up with some soft wax. Okay, now it's time for the legs. Um, I did go to Mitre 10 Mega and buy these, which I thought were quite nice, but they were $16 or $17 each. And then, of course, I had to buy the leg plates. They were $5 each. So you're looking over $20 um, per leg. So that's $80 to put legs on this um, set of drawers, which I think is, is too expensive. It's not worth that. So I'm going to return those. And then my father had a good idea. He said, Trish, go to a second-hand shop and see if they've got legs available there. And, of course, I found quite a few. So I've got these straight ones here. And I've got these ones here with a little um, boudacky thing on the bottom. So if you've got a, um, an, a, a floor that's not very level, I suppose it would be quite good. Um, I've also got these ones here. But these are um, angled ones. They've got the angled plate on. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want angled ones on that particular dresser. So I think I'll go with these ones here. And I'm going to sand those down, clean them up a bit, and then I will paint them black to match the knobs. Right, let's do this. So I'm just taking the shine off these with a bit of 180 grit sandpaper and try and get some of that tarnishing off the, um, the metal part. Next step is just to prime them. I've got this black primer. Uh, first time I've used this one. 
because I'm going to be painting the legs black, so I thought I'd use a black primer as well. It says it also bonds to plastic, which is pretty good. So wood, metal, plastic, and more. So yeah, we'll use that one. So the plates that I have to screw the legs into, the hole in the centre is too big. So I brought these, uh, I think they're called T-bolts. So you just drill a hole in the bottom of the dresser and that circumference there in the middle, pop it through and it has these sharp little spikes on there and they dig into the wood to keep it from spinning and then you pop your legs through. So we'll give that a go. Uh, hopefully it'll be sturdy enough. So yeah, let's do that. Just going to give these feet a coat of Fusion Mineral Paint in coal black. And after I've done that and it's dry, I will give it a spray with some matte clear, Rust-Oleum matte clear. Right, let's drill some holes in the bottom of this cabinet. So I need that side there. Spot on. Actually, I might drill a smaller hole first, and then a bigger one. So I had to go 5mm from each side, so I could get it right here. I didn't want to be putting it in this, because your drawer was going to hit that, so it had to go here. So 5mm that way, 5mm that way. to hold. Right, that should fit on the inside. So I've just placed that on the inside of the drawers, um, the prongs pointing towards the wood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nut and bolt through that and just with a washer and just tighten it right up so it pulls those prongs into the wood. And then I'll attach my legs later. You can hammer these in, but it's a bit awkward um, where it is. It's better to put a, a bolt, a nut and bolt through and pull it through like that. So all I have to do is tighten, hold that there and tighten the inside, push that nut right in and I will put that T-nut into the wood, so those prongs will go into the wood. And that's right in now. So we'll just take that off and we can put our legs on. So I went to put these in and they only go in so far and then it just starts stripping the thread because the threads are obviously not the same, not the right. So they can only get to that far and there's still, well, hell of a gap. And I haven't got a, I think it's called tap and die set where you can change the thread on this. 
so I'm going to have to keep these for another project, figure that out later. And looks like I'm going to have to use the expensive ones because they just go straight in perfectly. So let's paint these and use these. So once again I'm going to use my black primer on the wood and then I will just paint them with some fusion mineral paint black. Right, the legs on. On the home stretch now, guys. Nearly finished. Thanks for sticking around to watch my video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It'll help me out immensely. And more, so that's it. Right. Awesome. So here's a reminder of what it looked like before I started. And now here it is. Let me know in the comments guys what you think of it. Do you like the top drawer? Or should I have done that paint and wallpaper as well? It's not something I'll probably try again. It was a bit of a nightmare. But I got there in the end. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, guys, and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next one.